Hi folks, please don't forget to hit that like button and comment on this video. I know it's annoying to ask, but you know how the deal works, you know how this works, and it really helps when you do that. We get so many more eyes on our vids, so many more people commenting, and also make sure to be a true armchair general here during this campaign. Feel free to share any info, any tactics you think we should follow, and we will definitely consider it. Thank you. Welcome, folks, to Strategic Command American Civil War. Welcome to the American Civil War. Interestingly enough, guys, today we are going to be playing as the Confederacy from the very beginning of the Civil War in 1861 with the attack on Fort Sumter. Now, I want to be very clear that the campaigns in this game um, are quite short. I believe the longest one is 86 turns. And so we are going to play as the Confederates, but I ask that you please like and comment on every video. Again, when we do a long campaign like this, it takes a lot of work, a lot of editing, and I love a nice little payoff, to be honest here, folks. So first things first, and that is we probably want to jump to Diplomacy. I want to immediately start um, investing in diplomacy with either neighboring states or potentially investing in diplomacy here with the United Kingdom. Uh, one of the things I'd love to happen is have them eventually join the war. But you know what? Let's try and speed things up in Missouri. That's right. Um, and go ahead, spend some points. I'm also going to start researching infantry equipment, which I believe to be extremely important here at the beginning of the war. Um, and let us end the turn. Here we go. So the way the game works, and I really like this, is that, you know, it really follows the war the way it should be followed. Now, in this particular campaign, there is an alternate approach. Any number of different things could happen. In fact, in one of my playthroughs, uh, Florida got invaded. So despite European intervention being our best hope at winning the war, a minority of leaders believe we could be better off ordering the immediate sale of our cotton for gold. And what I'm going to do is I am going to keep that cotton in an effort to leverage it um, basically later with Europe for negotiations. I mean, who knows? You know, there is a chance um, that Great Britain will join our cause in an effort to secure the cotton trade. So I am going to, we could either go with French or Spanish support or try and go with English support. I am going for that UK support, really hoping um, that we, of course, manage to get the English on our side. And you can see some of our states already beginning to succeed, to secede, I should say. Um, it has begun. We've captured the Norfolk Navy Yard, and fairly soon we're going to be given a number of troops. We're going to be allotted armies, but I'm not entirely sure where I want to put those armies. And look at that. Anti-war Democrats and Confederate sympathizers riot in Baltimore. So one large part of this short campaign, and it will be short, is I want you guys to give me as much info, as many as much strategic as advice as you can uh, to make sure that we come out on top. It looks like Lincoln is calling for 75,000 volunteers. A blockade on the southern states has begun. And one thing that I'm very concerned about is our Navy doesn't stand a chance against the Union forces whatsoever. We're going to do what we can, though. Kentucky concerned by the Union violation of Missouri's neutrality policy. So Kentucky is currently neutral, and so is, um, of course, Missouri. Governor Jackson raises pro-Confederate Missouri State Guard. So it's good to see that some of these states, these other southern states, are supporting us quite a bit. Uh, Missouri, of course, being one of them. Uh, not really in the south, if you think about it. I mean, this is close to the Great Lakes, essentially. Um, but this did, of course, occur. Now, the question is, do we declare war on Kentucky and attack? Which is what the Confederacy did, eventually attacking with, I believe, General Polk's army. I'm not sure if we're going to go that same route or if we're going to kind of hold off for a bit. Because I really think... The most important thing for me is uh, to put as many troops as we can there um, on or in Virginia, I should say. And there we go. Arkansas joining the Confederacy. And of course, Tennessee immediately joining the Confederacy. That was quite obvious, to be honest. All of those forts on the rivers, of course, going directly under our control almost instantly.
right, guys? The Provisional Army of the Confederate States begins organizing. And so, just like a real war, it doesn't immediately start giving us troops. It really takes some time for our army to actually gain steam. Of course, those of you that are familiar with these strategic command games know that we need to research, we need to purchase troops, uh, we need to place our generals in, of course, um, opportune locations, if at all possible, etc., etc. So to avoid the federal blockade of our ports, we have begun importing 50 MPs per turn worth of copper, gunpowder, and other essential raw materials from Mexico via an overland route into Texas. Now, this is certainly helpful, holding on to Laredo, but really it's actually New Orleans, Louisiana, where the Confederates get most of those supplies. Virginia is unquestionably the most valuable state in the South, home to vast mineral resources and armaments production that will sustain our fight for independence. Now that it has joined the Confederacy, it is essential we began planning the defense of Virginia immediately. Our highest priority should be the defense of the city of Richmond and nearby Petersburg, which may be threatened by invasions both from the north out of Maryland or from the east from Fort Monroe, and that's because the, some of those forts on the coast are still under Union control. You're strongly advised to maintain an army in the Shenandoah Valley to the west, Shenandoah Valley to the west, although you should not seek to cross the Appalachians, as this will leave our troops exposed and difficult to supply. Um, and the Appalachians are going to be over here in the west. Uh, you can see the Appalachian Mountains. That range runs all the way down south. So basically, they're just letting us know um, a bit of a hint, really, that we should stay in this region with this part of our army, of course. You could see a number of div divisions available for production, and I think we have to put our first divisions here in Richmond, in Virginia, let the Union know that the Confederacy is prepared for war, and we shall stop at nothing to secure our independence. Now, in this early stage of the conflict, there's really not all that much we could do. We could start purchasing HQs, brigades, divisions, of course, um, and that's certainly going to come in handy. But I think the most important thing is going to be research initially. Um, there's so much here that we could use, but infantry tactics strikes me as an extremely important bit of research here. If anybody can recommend some other bits of research in the comments, feel free. Um, leadership also looks pretty good. So does cavalry tactics, which we desperately need and which the lead, which the Confederacy tends to be pretty good at. The same is true with leadership. So we could, of course, have put some in diplomacy, but we're going to stick to that and we are going to end the turn. We've got no more troops currently. We've got to wait until next turn here for things to really take place. Um, of course, there are still states deciding on whether or not they want to secede or remain, um, of course, part of the um, Union. And look at that. Great Britain extends belligerent status to the Confederacy in response to the blockade. So unfortunately, the um, Texas militia did not capture Fort Washita, uh, but we are getting additional brigades there near Virginia and are in Virginia. And as you can see, it looks like Beauregard is going to be our first major general. The army of the Shenandoah is starting to organize. Look at that. The Great Comet of 1861 is discovered by astronomer John Tebbett in New South Wales. All right, that's not going to affect us, but let's see what the Union does. And I want to see just how quickly the Union can mobilize here. Yeah, that's not good. That's what I was concerned about. Almost immediately, uh, they are starting to capture territory, trying to put this rebellion down. We need to respond with Beauregard's forces as quickly as possible. And I'm even thinking that um, I might sort of exercise additional caution. If we get any additional forces, I might send them over there to Beauregard. Kentucky issues a declaration of neutrality, much like they did historically. Let's see what happens going forward here. Quite a lot of captures right now. Um, New Haven, Connecticut, Wilmington, we've got some Union forces rising. Not really that big of a deal at the moment. I would love to put these guys in Alabama um, and really start attacking the enemy, or even better, in Tennessee or Missouri, where we could actually, you know, put up a pretty good fight against the enemy. But I think the order of the day right now is to just maximize our forces 
over here in Virginia. We're going to zoom in here and we're going to get PGT Beauregard's forces to start hitting the Union where it hurts. Now we know for sure the Union have forces over here at Fort Monroe and there's always that danger that they could lash out and start taking territory. I'm just kind of hoping they're not going to do that. Uh, let's send the cavalry up first. I want to go for Alexandria, Virginia here. And sure enough, the Union is nicely dug in. So what can we do? Well, we can start moving our forces up to the front lines. We get, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I could have done an undo button, but I'm a bit new to this. Um, and actually, I was going to say, actually, I'll send this force here. But no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to succumb to pressure. We shall survive, I believe, folks. I'm just making sure we don't have any other forces here. I believe that's going to be it. We might have some Confederate units. That's right. We do have one Confederate unit over here, don't we, in Texas. Getting over there is going to be a bit of a pain. Now, New Mexico is also an important area here during this particular fight. Not that important. I'm not seeing that next unit. So what we can do is simply go to this button and there we go. Um, so sure enough, that unit is over here near a bunch of different Indian territories. A lot of these territories end up usually siding with the Confederacy, believe it or not. Uh, but what I'm going to do is start heading eastwards towards Arkansas. We could also start heading southwards and eventually wind up in New Mexico. I think that's probably the best approach right now. Let's do that. Now, with those particular points, we're absolutely, guys, going to need to start um, trying to get the Brits to notice us. So let's face it, um, if we want to win this war, at the end of the day, I think we're going to need their support. We could also go ahead and invest in some diplomacy in the Choctaw Indians, um, get them on our side a lot sooner than expected. And I'll also jump into research here. There's certainly something else we could focus on, skirmishers for sure. Scouts would also be extremely helpful. The one thing I think is kind of confusing is given the short um, time period of this campaign, it seems like this research, you know, it's it's only going to matter sort of a third of the way through the war. So you really need to uh, select that research early on. Logistics is huge. Let's do that. And we'll save the rest of our points for a rainy day. There we go. Let's end the turn. All right, the Missouri State Guard, despite receiving tens of thousands of volunteers, suffers from shortages of equipment is unlikely to keep the Federal Army out of Jefferson City indefinitely. Although efforts to reinforce the area are unlikely to save the city, our other forces in Missouri are well positioned to maintain control of at least part of the state. If you wish to prioritize the sector, we can send a command staff in the form of a Confederate HQ unit under General Sterling Price to Springfield, Missouri. Price would then be able to train and equip our forces there so that they're they may offer more effective resistance against the Federals. I think absolutely. It's going to be 375 MPPs, which we don't have now, so I'm not sure how that works. We might automatically get a no there, um, but that happens in Strategic Command games. Nice. And sure enough, our government is now officially in Richmond, Virginia, just like we like it. Looks like some volunteers from Arkansas have decided to join the rebel cause. I like to see that for sure. And additional um, volunteers here in Richmond, Virginia, and also General Johnston. Guys, look at that. That's a hell of a lot of troops. We're going to have to send them north for sure. And we're also getting a river gunboat. Though, if I am to be completely honest, I don't think any of our forces here, or our naval forces, are going to make a difference at all. So I definitely need you armchair generals to let me know what's the appropriate response with those naval forces. What should we be doing with them uh, to get, of course, uh, the most use out of them, essentially? And I see that capture in Missouri is quite devastating. I mean, they are just taking territory after territory. It doesn't seem to end. What can we really do about that? That's the question. I 
I was worried about that. Just a very weak garrison unit there defending Jefferson City, the capital. Um, and it's just a tough place to hold on to. The Federals are much stronger here in the West. There's no doubt about that. Um, they have plenty of forts out here. And for us to take it, it's going to be tough. Missouri surrendered within a day. Just essentially an instant grab by the Federals there. And that's going to hurt us. But I feel like there was very, very little for us to do there. And for support for Kentucky and Succession, Waynes followed the defeat of the Missouri State Guard. Guys, I think we're eventually going to have to declare war on Kentucky. It's that simple. Uh, that's what, of course, General Polk under the Confederacy did um, in an effort to grab the state as quickly as possible. It really was split down the middle in terms of support for the Union and the Confederacy. And that might be the case right here. In light of the great industrial importance that Virginia's foundries have to the South, the decision has been made to move the government to the city of Richmond. That's right, I certainly like that. Um, now, again, I told you guys, I think we're going to have to really strengthen this area, especially now that we have two generals. But at the same time, I mean, we need some defenses over here, right? So I think I'm actually going to drop one of the units here in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, be nice to have a general there, but for now we're just going to kind of watch the Mississippi River and try and take those tiles back um, under our control. In any case, I want to thank everybody for watching this first episode of Strategic Command, the American Civil War. I'd love to play more, but you know what you have to do to see the next one, and that is like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much, folks, and catch you in the next video.